let's talk about perimenopause. Yeah. And how do we know we're perimenopausal? Um, and how should we approach our training when we do discover we're perimenopausal? Yeah. So, uh, a lot of people will be surprised to know that the average age of the onset of perimenopause is their late 30s. Whoa. So if you are mid 40s, oh, am, I, am I in it? You am I are. in it right now? How do I you know? Are. Well, we look at symptomology, but also one of the biggest tells in the athletic population is a significant drop in power. I have so many women who all of a sudden, maybe in their late 40s, are like, what's going on? I have lost a significant amount of power. I can't jump as high. I can't lift as much. My speed's off. All of a sudden, I can't do pull-ups. And this is a definitive sign that you are in late perimenopause. Because one of the very first things that goes is estrogen's ability to generate muscle contractile strength and speed. Um, because there's a, a misstep in some of the mechanisms for creating a very strong contraction. Prior to that, we look at things like, uh, are you tired but wired? How is your sleep? Are you having any vasomotor symptoms? Are you um, feeling that it takes more time to recover? Are you putting on belly fat? There's a whole long list of symptomology. We can't just go get a blood test, unfortunately. Um, it would be nice if we could, but we can't. And if you're really, really curious about it, then you can use something like Prove or UVA. These are two FDA-approved apps that use urinary markers for progesterone. And if you're not ovulating, then you're definitely in perimenopause. You will, like I said, you'll still have a bleed. We see changes in the length of the cycle. Uh, we start to first see changes in the bleed pattern. So this is where if you're tracking your menstrual cycle over the course of time, then you start to see changes, subtle at first and then overt changes these are stepwise increments into perimenopause. I can't just like mind game it and be like, you are not, you are not just the, the will. Have you, have this research been done on CrossFitters? I, I ask this because um, I'm, I'm 45 and I am doing things now that I couldn't do when I was 42, 41, 40, meaning the weights that I'm moving the movements that I'm able to complete. So I don't feel, um, and again, feel is very subjective, right? It's emotional, but I don't feel less powerful. And I'm wondering what those results of that research would look like if it was done over time on CrossFit as if it would change. I would love to see that. We don't have it yet. We're uh, seeing an uptick in uh, requests for proposals and, and funding. So I. I would love to see a longitudinal research um, study in endurance versus CrossFit mm -hmm. because that one would be very interesting and telling. Uh, from personal anecdotes and personal stories, a lot of women don't start to feel like they've been hit by the perimenopause sledgehammer when they are in something like CrossFit or High Rocks until they get to around 48, 49. Okay, so it's coming. And then they're like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> and some of the other things that come up a lot in perimenopause that people just attribute to sport and sport injury are things like plantar fascia issues, um, frozen shoulder, other soft mm -hmm. tissue injuries, ligament injuries, tendinopathies. These are all signs that you're in perimenopause because estrogen and progesterone and a little bit of testosterone is, is really integral in maintaining ligament, tendon, and soft tissue homeostasis. So if you start to have a misstep in those sex hormones, you're going to start to see more subtle uh, tears and you're going to have more inflammation. You're going to have uh, a lot of joint issues as well. So these are all things that people are just like, oh, I'm training too hard. I didn't recover well enough when actually it could be part of perimenopause. It's so, it's fascinating. Again, the mindset of, I'm, I just, you know, I'm not fit enough. You know, I should be fit enough. I wouldn't be a sore. Right. Uh, and uh, so how do we, how do we modify our, the, our words, CrossFit? How do we scale 
our training where we're still able to do high intensity, but perhaps we just have to approach it differently? What, what would you recommend for somebody that's in that stage of their cycle? So um, mobility, super important. I feel like uh, myself and my friends were all, always talking about how we spend more time warming up than actually doing the workout. <laughs> <laughs> so doing proper mobility is super important so that we can maintain the range of motion and get that that end point so that we don't get injured. If you start to have soft tissue issues, don't put it off. Actually take care of it immediately through things like dry needling, massage, um, rest, recovery, because you don't want to be sidelined for four or five months with an injury that's because of perimenopause. Um, one of the other things to think about is the difference between strength days and Metcon days. So for women who love CrossFit, it's making a choice. How do you feel? Is today a heavy lifting day? Let's work specifically on technique and loading, and then we're just going to move during the Metcon portion. Or are you going to use it as a high intensity day? Let's just focus on technique and, and moving under the bar without load and then really nail the Metcon. So being able to polarize and pick and choose is going to be very beneficial for maintaining fitness and reducing injury risk, as well as being able to progress at a much faster rate. 